it's imperative that light from the vegetative room does not disturb the sleep of the plants in the flowering room. It's because of this that I'm going to Velcro the door shut. When I need to open it, when I need to close it, you know the story. I've stapled this one side of the Velcro into the frame, and I have aligned and pulled the sticky part on the other side, and I did it all the way down the frame. All I have to do is release the door and stick them on. Now it's light proof. I'm going to begin with the construction of the vegetative grow room. This room is going to have 18 hours of light per day. I have plenty of room to work with. Three feet depth, five feet width, and eight feet of height. All I need to start off with is this power strip. I'm going to plug all my four-foot fluorescence into this power strip. Because of this, I plug the power strip into this timer. It's preset for 18 hours a day, on at 6 in the morning, off at midnight. Now I can hang up the four-foot fluorescence. It doesn't matter what type of hood I have. What does matter are the bulbs. I need a cool white and a warm white bulb on each of these hood setups. I measure the distance between the hanging chains on each of the hoods. This one's about 41 inches. And if you look up at the ceiling, I place these boards about 41 inches apart from each other. I've also put in hooks for each set of lights so that the lights sit about one inch from each other and they'll sit right here, perfectly above the plants. I use five foot long chain pieces on each side of the four foot fluorescence. That way, I can drop the fluorescent lights all the way down within inches of the tops of the plants. Temperature and airflow are very important. I'm really lucky in this basement that I have a lot of free moving air, especially with this oscillating fan. I'm not going to even need this squirrel cage for this room. I'm going to need it for the budding room for sure. If I was in an attic or a closet or someplace where there's a lot of stagnant air, then I'd throw one of these in because they work great. But for this room, this fan will be just fine. Plants love light. The more, the better. Don't be fooled by imitations. Mylar works the best for reflecting light. So I put it all over the room. This reflective mylar and these four-foot fluorescents, that's all the lights my plants are going to need in this vegetative grow room. I could use model halides, I could use even a high-pressure sodium, but there's no need. My mothers, my clones, my production plants, everything can be raised here on 18 hours of light with no problem. Table's done. Here I have a two foot by four foot piece of plywood. I cut two holes on either end, which are for the drainage nozzles of the hydroponic system that's going to sit right here. If my plants had to rely on me to water them, 
three times a day consistently, well, I probably wouldn't have any bud to smoke. That's one of the reasons I use a hydroponic watering system. Another reason is plants grow faster in a soilless mixture. I usually save two to four weeks on maturing plants just because I use a hydroponic system. Looking at all these parts I've selected, it can be really intimidating. I flooded my house uh, 10 times until I realized the basic rule of the hydroponic system. Whether you make your own like I am, or I go out and uh, purchase one from the store, the principle is always the same. You have to have the planter higher than the reservoir. Then when the pump is turned off in the reservoir, the planter will always drain. It's important to have a drainage. I found this perfect two foot by four foot plastic tray that I'm going to use as my planter. I have this 20 gallon plastic tub that I'm going to use as my water reservoir. And all these parts are going to connect the two together. First, I'm going to get 5 8 inch outer diameter, half inch inner diameter, black plastic vinyl tubing. I'm going to cut three pieces, five feet long. Two for my exit and one for my entrance, connecting my reservoir to my planter. Then I'm going to get a pump. The pump has a half inch diameter to fit perfect for the hose. These nozzles are perfect. They're one inch diameter, excellent for my drill bit, and they have a half inch hookup, perfect for the hose. These drip nozzles are perfect. I can get them at almost any home garden center. They're super easy to hook up, stick in your plant, and my hose fits on the end just perfectly. I've pre-drilled two one-inch holes on either end of my planter. Now all I have to do is hook up these drainage nozzles with some aquarium silicone all around the edges. I put some extra silicone on the back side and do it just hand tight. Perfect. Now that the silicone is dry, I can put my black tray right up on my wood, putting the nozzles in the holes that I cut in the wood, and I can hook up my line. I connect the hose right up to the nozzle. I take this little zip tie. The other side. The water is going to get pumped through this main hole of this eight head nozzle. Then I'm going to attach these quarter inch hoses at the tip of the quarter inch hose. We have a uh, dripper and a little spike to go in the cube, and every plant's going to get their own hose or their own dripper. I'm going to assemble these all together. Once I connect this last feeder hose, I can set the whole nozzle in the middle of the tray and connect this half inch hose right to the middle. The other end, I can hook up right to this pump, and I'll secure both ends with the zip tie. 